Hi there and welcome back to the Finance Lounge. Uh, the Finance Lounge is our own very own financial information and educational platform. So let's have a quick look at the news and um, what's happened this week based on the events that's going on during the week. Obviously it's always going to be financially related or with a financial theme. I can't believe it's a week gone already and so much has actually happened in, in this week. Um, obviously the biggest story in Scotland this week for me has been the fact that from the 10th of July um, everyone has to wear uh, some form of face covering if you go shopping or into any shop. Now when I was in um, a supermarket uh, a few days ago um, I, when it was first announced I, I said to one of the managers I said uh, uh, are you all geared up for this uh, face mask, uh, face covering day that's going to start from next week and she turned around and she, first thing she said to me oh, I, I'm not sure about the guidelines I'm not sure whether or not staff have got to wear as well so it just goes to show that the, the government even the Scottish government are not getting their story out there uh, accurately the, the, the guidance that they're giving uh, is not concise it's not precise and it's given too, ma too many uh, room for interpretation and this is where we've had uh, problems in the past especially with social distancing and we see it in Leicester that I think the real issue there is not the fact that people haven't been social distancing properly it's just the, the, the so much um, misinterpretation of the actual rules because they're not clear like when Boris Johnson said oh you can go to work from tomorrow but you can't go to work you can't use transport you can't use public transport and then all of a sudden it wasn't uh, going to start on Monday and it was actually not going to take enforcement until Wednesday um, and it was so much confusion so there's still a lot of confusion out there when the government are giving their uh, setting out their rules and regulations and um, dictating what what you have what you can do what you can't do and um, they're not being precise enough and certainly the guidance is not there uh, or it's not fast enough coming through and obviously the, the biggest story in England this week has been about the pubs reopening um, I can understand about opening on the 4th of July because the 4th of July Independence Day they call it Super Saturday and all this sort of nonsense but I still don't understand why they never decided that you can open um, a few days um, earlier or in the middle of the week get the staff prepared, get them used to the rules, get them used to the guidelines get them used to actually um, doing the show, directing people and, and, on, on how the social distancing actually works put it into force when it's quiet and then all of a sudden all these people are going to uh, pounce onto the pubs etc um, we'll wait and see what happens I think the real test is going to be at chucking out time let's see what happens when the people are coming out are they, are they drunk, are they sober um, how are you going to control them are, is the police going to be there to make sure that they're actually social distancing outside on their way home or when they're leaving the premises how are they going to manage that I can actually see us going back into lockdown very shortly if not within the next few weeks because I think opening the pub um, in that environment with the alcohol and all the rest of the nonsense that goes with it um, and when alcohol's in that they, they start people start fighting and all that I mean how, how are you going to social distance um, there so I think they've made a big mistake by opening the pubs um, restaurants I can understand cafes small cafes I can understand or, or cafe restaurants I can understand that but to open a pub um, the, the only good thing that I've heard so far is a lot of the pubs uh, landlords have decided not to open uh, today for various reasons and the main reason is that they want to see what happens they want to see actually how does this act going to work in practice and also how are they actually going to control it manage it and is it going to be successful is it going to be a waste of time is it actually going to cost money because you, uh, technically you need more staff to manage people I know there's going to be uh, less people but the people still need to be controlled, managed, social distancing and like I said before previously in the video um, when alcohol alcohol comes into it they're not going to be able to manage these people um, in a sufficient way so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that but my own opinion is we're going back into lockdown because that was the wrong move if not um, they, they should turn around and say look instead of going back into a lockdown um, maybe even consider closing the pubs again let's see what happens, it'll be interesting they're not open in Scotland uh, it's just in England, um, along with the hairdressers, which is probably a good thing. Um, at least people can get out and about and get back to some sort of normal life. Um, and, and, and there was a, a report this morning on uh, 
I think it was a it was a BBC one. I think it was BBC one, and they said that it was it was a good a, a, a feel good factor that the hairdressers was opening, and not only just for women but for men as well and for kids who want to go out um, and get their hair cut. I've been cutting my own son's hair, um, but I know he would probably prefer to go to the hairdressers and get it done professionally. Um, not to say I did a bad job, but it's still not the same as going to the hairdressers. So it's been good for the kids as well to get back, get their hair done, um, make them feel a little bit better about themselves, um, and especially for uh, older people as well, um, they can get out and about. It's a good thing. So that's the pubs and, and the hairdressers in England. I don't know what's happening in Scotland. Scotland, I think we're all going to grow along here, um, a bit like Braveheart, so um, we can emulate um, th that sort of scenes from, from Braveheart with, with our long hair because we, the hairdressers are not open again. Um, and uh, we'll wait and see what happens. But there's one story I had this week which really, really riled me. I hate to say it, it pissed me off like when I seen this. And it was... In the middle of the week, it was the fact that the music industry or some leading figures or all of these leading artists in the music industry have come and written a letter to government looking for a bailout for the music industry, in particular for live events and also for festivals. My first reaction to this is that they're wanting a bailout for the music industry, right? They want millions of pounds to finance the music industry. Um, or help it out during COVID-19. Do they not realise that we've got people starving? Do they not realise that we've got people going to food banks? Do they not realise that we have people living in the streets in cardboard boxes and they're worried about the music industry? Now, I hate to say this, if they give a government bailout for a festival for people to go on a weekend jaunt, to get pissed, to get high, when we've got people living in cardboard boxes, people going to food banks, even though they're working, they still have to go to food banks because they can't afford to eat, but they're wanting millions of pounds to finance um, a couple of thousand or even more, 10,000 people to go and, and get uh, uh, wrecked over a weekend. If anything, you're gonna put even more burden, because a lot of these people, this is where people OD um, for, th through alcohol poisoning, through uh, drug abuse, they're gonna put even more pressure on the NHS and for the artists like uh, Elton, uh, not, uh, Elton John, uh, Rod Stewart, Paul McCartney, uh, Ed Sheeran, you've got your own fucking money. Like, if you want to bail out your industry, use your own millions to bail out the industry. And like uh, Paul McCartney said, it's only going to be for a year. I'm sure with him and all his pals got together, one year of supporting the music industry is not going to put a dent in his billions and the millions of everybody else. So if you want to save your own industry, have a look at yourselves. Use your own money. Why are you using government money which can be spent on the NHS? It can be spent on, on sorting out the education system so we can get social distancing done properly so we can get kids back to school. It can be spent on people having not to go to food banks. It can get spent on people not having to live uh, on the streets in cardboard boxes. But you're worried about bailing out the music industry. It doesn't even make sense. And it really pisses me off that you're going cap in hand to the government, using our money, government money, the people, they're taking the money from somewhere. It's not coming from, from a thin air, it's coming from taxpayers. And you're wanting taxpayers' money to bail out something that you could probably finance yourself. Like he said, it's only gonna be for a year, if not sooner because of um, the social distancing. We don't know what's gonna happen with COVID-19 whether or not they're going to find a vaccine or whether or not it'll uh, uh, fizzle out eventually or, or, or the R rate will come down so low that it's not going to be a, such a, a big problem. But they can't put their hand in their own pocket. But they want us to put our hand in their pocket. The people who are struggling to put their hands in their pocket to fund their industry. I'm sorry. But that, that just took the, the, the biscuit for me. Like That was just too much. Um, anyway, that's my taking it. It's still a financial related problem because the money's got to come from somewhere. Um, I'll come back to you, but that's the, the big news. Let's see what happens with the pubs this week. Uh, it'll be interesting. And the most, I'm waiting to see what, what the news is going to be like tomorrow because what's, what's going to happen at chucking out time tonight and um, how they're going to control that and how they're going to get on. Um, and it'll be interesting to see that or, or be interesting to see how that unfolds. Good luck. Subscribe to the channel if you like it. And um, hopefully see you soon.
stay safe and keep your family safe.